Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's online office hour, Testing Distributed Systems at Scale for the Cost of a Large Pizza on AWS. My name is Amelia, and I will be your moderator. Before I introduce you to our speaker, I have a few housekeeping items. All participants are automatically on mute throughout the session. We will be using Slack to communicate, so please take a moment to join us on the community Slack channel, which is copied into the chat box at aluxio.io backslash Slack. However, if you are having trouble joining Slack, feel free to message me your questions instead, and I will share it with the group. In today's session, our speaker will be giving an overview of how the Aluxio engineering team tests distributed systems at scale, and then we will have a Q&A session at the end so we can answer all of your questions. But you should feel free to submit your questions anytime. And again, to ask a question, join the community Slack channel posted into the chat box, or you can also use the GoToWebinar control panel located on the right-hand side of your screen under the tab Questions. Lastly, today's session is being recorded and will be available for on-demand playback, and we will email you the link to the presentation as well. That's it for the housekeeping items, so let's meet our speaker. I'm very pleased to welcome Zach Blanco, who is a software engineer at Aluxio. Zach has been involved in open source software for many years. He currently uh, works at Aluxio as a back-end engineer. Uh, he is also a committer on the Apache Knox project and has previously worked at Hortonworks. Without further ado, I'll go ahead and pass it along to Zach. Thanks everyone for joining today. Uh, super excited to talk to you guys about how we uh, test Alexio and, and kind of share more about how we accomplish that here. Um, so we're just going to get started. Um, so if you guys don't know already, Alexio is a quite a bit large open source project. We have over a thousand contributors, lots of stars on GitHub, uh, millions of downloads. Uh, if you guys want to get involved in the community, head over to our GitHub page, github.com slash Alexio Alexio. Um, you'll find the project there. Um, so first things first, uh, for today, I wanna basically help you guys uh, get three things from this talk. Um, the first one is kind of some general um, methods that you can, and things that you can follow to test distributed software at scale. Um, we're mainly gonna be focusing on how we accomplish that at Alexio, uh, but you should be able to get some other things out of that that you might be able to apply to other projects that you work with. Um, I'm also going to talk about uh, a little bit uh, about the types of tests that we run on Alexio. Um, there's lots of different types of way you can test software and I'm going to run through some of the uh, systems testing that we do um, on a pretty much a daily basis uh, for Alexio. And lastly, uh, we're also going to go over uh, some strategies for testing software at scale. So, um, you know, when you have clusters that can run thousands and thousands of nodes. Um, how can you do that cheaply? Because we don't always have unlimited resources. Uh, so we need to find a way that we can reliably test parts of our system when we do scale to that number uh, of nodes in a cluster. Uh, so first things first, uh, I, I want to go through uh, basically the types of testing or types of testing that is commonly uh, found throughout different software projects, uh, not just in distributed systems. Um, we'll review this real quick to get, make sure everyone is on the same page. <clears throat> so the first type is, and most basic type of testing for software is gonna be unit testing, right? So unit testing is mainly focused around uh, testing small utilities, functions, uh, and classes that um, don't, that are quite small in scope. Um, so an example of one of these uh, <clears throat> might be like you have some uh, proto object, uh, some object that gets serialized over the wire, um, and you have some functions that uh, serialize and deserialize this, and you convert it maybe into some other type of class or object, and you want to uh, test that the conversion function is correct between the serialized and non-serialized version. Um, and so you can write a unit test to do that. You don't need to you know, launch a whole cluster to do your testing. Um, and so unit testing is, is pretty much the most basic type of testing uh, that you're going to do. The next uh, type that you will encounter after unit testing is integration testing. Uh, 
Um, and so integration testing is when you're testing the interfaces of different pieces of your software together. Um, so one thing, uh, one example of this might be that you have, uh, let's say specific to Alexio, um, you will have a, a worker registration system. So the worker, when it comes up, it'll automatically register with the master and the master will now know that it has like a worker available to it to assign uh, blocks and files. And so maybe testing the, that worker registration system, sending the RPC to the master, does the master register that worker? And if you make another request um, to the master, will the worker be returned in that request? Uh, so it's not necessarily testing the entire system, but uh, a small component of that uh, of the interfaces uh, together. And, and lastly, um, is system testing. Um, and system testing is basically when you take your entire piece of software and run it as if you were going to be using the software. Uh, so an example of doing uh, of system testing might be, you know, if you're Alexio writing a file to Alexio and then reading it back. Um, or if you want to go a step further, it could be um, maybe using something like Presto and then running a query on Presto and making sure that you can read the data through Alexio and that it works. Um, so that's an example of system testing. Now, uh, there are other types of software testing. I think these are the three most common types of testing and they encapsulate most of um, what we do here, uh, but there definitely is other types. Uh, these are the, the three I just wanted to talk about. Uh, but our main focus today is gonna be on kind of the system testing that we do at Alexio, uh, how we launch, you know, full clusters, um, and then, you know, run a variety of test suites uh, across those. Um, so the next thing I wanna talk about before we talk about the actual test is, how testing distributed systems is different and more challenging than testing uh, what I'll call normal software. Um, so distributed systems is, is unique because it presents a lot more challenges than simply you know, running a single binary, right? Um, so one of the biggest hurdles for distributed systems in, in testing is that, especially if you're testing at scale, you need to launch multiple typically physical machines, whether it's on the public cloud or EC2, maybe you run OpenStack on-prem, um, maybe you're using Azure or Google Cloud, but either way, you have to have uh, some kind of framework to manage the all the different physical nodes that you have or virtual machines um, in your testing framework. And there's not that many testing frameworks out there that can really support something like that. So a lot of the time uh, you'll have to either roll something in house and have you know your your engineering team dedicate resources just to maintaining some kind of framework to uh, <clears throat> to provision um, you know and and launch clusters and that's kind of what we do at Alexio on top of that though there's also other challenges that arise with uh, testing distributed systems one of those is being debugging so when you do hit a failure um, in your testing suite, let's say it's like a test you run on a nightly basis. Um, how do you figure out what the, the problem is? Sometimes it's it's simple as going into the logs uh, and looking for an error. Um, other times it's more complex um, because you're dealing with multiple physical machines. You have to kind of figure out, you know, what failure, which machine did it fail on? Um, was the original cause on that machine? Uh, you end up having to you know, kind of trace back and doing uh, a, like a remote debugging uh, if you're using Java, uh, you can do it, but it's it's not as easy as a single machine where you can simply step through the code in, in your uh, you know IDE um, debugger. So testing and debugging issues is also more difficult. Um, and then the third thing, uh, depending on the types of tests you're running, um, if, if you're running performance tests, which is one of the things that we run uh, on a nightly basis uh, at Alexio, is the uh, public cloud instances, if you are using AWS or Azure or Google Cloud, um, they actually, uh, a lot of the instances will tend to have quite large swings in performance um, depending on how long the instance is up, who your neighbors are in the data center. Um, 
I've read a couple of places online uh, where people claim to have up to 40% uh, performance difference or performance variation um, just based on the instance that they, they request. So you could request an instance in one availability zone and maybe your performance numbers hit, I don't know, let's say 10,000 uh, as an arbitrary number. Uh, another instance, it might hit 14,000 or it might be as low as 6,000. Um, so, uh, you know, that 40% that variation, it's, uh, it can be tricky to kind of pinpoint uh, whether something is a true performance regression or uh, whether it's uh, you know actually due to uh, just the underlying hardware and your neighbors in the data center. Um, so kind of going back to the one of the original problems I talked about for this was the uh, <clears throat> the uh, <clears throat> the issue with managing a framework to launch and test across a cluster of nodes. Managing um, that cluster of nodes just to do your testing uh, is difficult and it's also expensive, uh, especially if you want to test at scale. Um, having a cluster of nodes, uh, it, it gives you, obviously you want your users to be able to use your software to, the, to its fullest extent. So at Alexio, you know, we want to see people using terabytes and terabytes of data and have it stored in Alexio and read through Alexio in their applications. But to actually write tests that run on a regular basis where we can, you know, have, let's say, you know, hundreds of terabytes of data or uh, thousands of workers. I mean, if you were to launch a thousand workers on EC2, uh, depending on how much data storage you have, I mean, that can, let's say your instance size is like, M5 X large, um, you know, I think it's something around 10 cents an hour, but if you're launching a thousand of them, uh, your costs are definitely going to add up. So one of the issues we really wanted to address at Alexio is, well, how can we simulate or uh, understand the performance of our system uh, at that kind of scale without spending as much money? Or, or is there anything we can do um, to kind of see how our system would behave at that scale uh, without spending as much money. So uh, before I talk about that, I, I'm just going to quickly go through the different types of tests that we'll, we run on Alexio, and uh, then I'll talk about how we test some of these uh, at scale. So um, on a nightly basis, we basically have two types of tests with Alexio. We have ones that are performance tests, where we are measuring the performance throughput of different operations on the system. And then we have other ones that are like feature verification to make sure that, uh, you know, the, the feature works. We're not necessarily testing performance in some of these cases. So uh, we have a suite of tests that uh, test variations of metadata operations and the number of operations per second that an Alexio master can handle given a, an arbitrary or somewhat arbitrary number of clients. So uh, for example, we'll have, a, we'll have like maybe 10 or 15 nodes and we'll have each one of those 15 nodes at its maximum rate sending create file operations to Alexio and they won't be writing any data but they'll just be creating as many empty files as possible. And so we'll test how fast the Alexio master can, uh, what the maximum rate of processing those create file RPCs is. And then similarly, similarly, we'll do stuff for list status calls, uh, delete calls, uh, a whole slew of, of different uh, file system operations. Um, and then we also have uh, raw IO throughput tests. So RPC throughput is important for Luxio, but uh, at the end of the day, it's IO throughput that uh, most users will actually uh, care about. So we have plenty of tests that we'll make sure that we, or we'll see how fast we can read data from Alexio um, when it's distributed across multiple nodes, when it's all contained in a single node, uh, worker node. Um, so there's those tests. Uh, and then we also run some, some, I'll call them real world benchmarks, but we'll run queries on like Presto with Alexio, uh, running uh, using data from like the TPCDS um, benchmarking suite. And there's also Intel's uh, high bench uh, benchmark that we use to uh, basically see how our performance compares to uh, when using you know, Spark and MapReduce or, or other compute frameworks. Using Alexio versus HDFS, we, we compare the performance between those two systems. 
Um, and then the feature verification tests we do are things like durable writes with async through. So if you're writing with async through, uh, your data is typically written only to memory. Um, but if you want it to be durable, uh, you know, in case of a node failure, you want multiple replicas. So that's uh, one of the features that we test on a nightly basis. We also do failover and fault tolerance tests where we'll, uh, autom we'll automatically, we'll, we'll bring up a, you know, a cluster of three to five masters and we'll keep killing masters over and over again to make sure that the cluster is still operational after killing and bringing the masters back up. Um, we test replication and we also test our integrations with things like CloudFormation, EMR, Kubernetes. Um, that's just to kind of give you guys an idea of the, the tests that we run on a, on a nightly basis. Um, so the one problem though that we have, or that we originally had with a lot of these tests is we weren't really testing these at the scale that a lot of our customers wanted to use Alexio at. Um, so I would say a lot of these clusters can range anywhere between like a simple master and maybe one to two workers. And some clusters will go up to about 10 workers and one master. Uh, but even at that scale, that's not really the scale that we're seeing people use Alexio at. Um, but the cost is still quite considerable when you cons when you think about you know these are these are just a few of them, few uh, test sets. But uh, we I think we run somewhere over 300 tests on a nightly basis using real clusters. Um, so we need to make sure that we keep our costs down, or we want to keep our costs down, but still test. Um, in scenarios that we'll see our customers using our software in. Um, so basically, uh, we decided that after kind of analyzing uh, how Alexio is used and, and some of the internals of Alexio, we decided that we don't actually need to launch, uh, you know, a thousand physical machines or a thousand EC2 instances to get the <clears throat> the same kind of testing. Um, and the same kind of environment that we would in uh, a normal like customer or uh, users uh, <clears throat> uh, users environment. Um, so, so with Alexio, there's different types of scale that you can think about. Uh, one of those types is the raw data size. Um, so your cluster can store terabytes and terabytes of data, um, but that having terabytes and terabytes of data well, basically, um, the the metadata within Alexio um, and the data that's stored is kind of independent of one another. While having more data can lead to uh, scalability problems. Typically, it, it's uh, the metadata that's stored within the worker and master processes that lead to scalability issues. So, um, basically, the when when you're doing operations in Alexio, we store information uh, about the workers, all the workers that are registered, and the clients and master have to uh, basically scan through the list of workers, either uh, looking for where blocks are stored, which worker uh, blocks are present on. Um, it has to look for uh, the worker metadata and, and scan through a list of worker metadata. Um, and those are typically a lot of, those are the areas that we see uh, scaling issues with is the metadata within the processes and not necessarily the <clears throat> sorry the not, not not necessarily the the raw amount of data that's actually stored in Alexio um, and so with that observation we kind of decided that instead of launching thousands of EC2 instances what we can do is is scale down um, the size of our worker processes in the cluster so that we can scale up the metadata that the masters have to work with um, <clears throat> rather than having, you know, a single worker that stores, you know, 50 gigabytes of, of data in RAM, we can actually split 50 gigabytes of data into um, 50 gigabytes of storage into 100 workers where each worker stores maybe 512 megabytes instead. Um, and basically what that does is, uh, while the data size isn't huge, the uh, master will still have the same amount of metadata to go through um, when it's processing requests. Uh, <clears throat> and we can also scale down the uh, Alexio's block size as well uh, to basically make sure that the amount of metadata that's stored in the Alexio master um, 
scales up even though the actual total amount of data is the same. So basically there's, there's kind of two, um, two ways to test on a cluster for us. There's the one-to-one -one test system testing where we have one Alexio worker uh, per EC2 machine. Uh, and then there's the one-to-end system testing where you have one EC2 instance, but you might have anywhere between 20 and 50 uh, <clears throat> worker processes on that same machine. Um, and so basically, so basically uh, you'll have more resources available per process. There's a lot more overhead. Um, sometimes you, you would even consider a lot of the resources to be wasted depending on what test you're running. Uh, if you're not allocating the smallest size instance that you need for that test, um, then you could be wasting resources. Um, where the one to end system testing, we can basically easily scale the number of workers on a single instance up and up to the point where we're, we're hitting, you know, the maximum RAM and CPU usage. Um, and we basically get the most of, out of our hardware when we're, when we're paying for it. So uh, this is just kind of like a simple diagram to show uh, how one of these clusters would look. So the, the red boxes are Docker containers. So we, we launch um, so we have an in-house framework to um, launch and manage all of our EC2 instances and, and run these tests. Um, and so uh, we use Docker uh, to launch uh, the containers on every node. Um, and then you can see that you'll have, you know, four containers per EC2 instance in this diagram and, you know, instead of having simply four workers for this cluster, you now have 16 um, instead to choose to, uh, to work with. So there are some challenges related to having a, a testing uh, architecture like this. And I think there's a couple things specific to Alexio that enabled us to easily uh, test on this kind of, kind of architecture. And one of those things is that the way that workers register in our cluster with the master uh, node is that the worker basically tells the master all of the information about itself. Uh, that's the host name, the, all the ports it's running on, um, uh, even the configuration that it has, um, uh, that it's configured with uh, all the data storage. Uh, so, <clears throat> uh, so the, uh, the thing that makes that easy is that, uh, all of the ports that the workers, uh, the, the, the thing that makes it the easiest is that all of the ports the workers are running on have, uh, <clears throat> uh, all the ports the workers are running on uh, are known by the master. So what we do with the Docker containers is we actually run the containers with the host networking driver. So all of the containers uh, are basically running on the same network interface, which means they can't use the standard Alexio ports because otherwise the containers would conflict with one another. So what we actually do is we set all of the ports that the uh, workers listen on to zero so that the operating system will dynamically assign those ports uh, when the process comes up. And that basically allows us to uh, mitigate any port conflicts when bringing up multiple containers on the same machine. And then once the container, once one of the process worker processes within the container comes up and registers with the master, it notifies the master uh, what ports it's running on. And that way, when you actually run an application uh, and the information is sent uh, about, you know, which worker to connect to is sent to a client, all the information, including the ports to connect to, uh, is included is included in that to the client. So the client can connect to any one of these individual workers, even though they share host names, uh, because the way the Alexio master uh, shares the connection information or about how to connect, uh, we're able to uh, accomplish this kind of testing. Um, so there might be other systems that, that do something similar. Uh, I know specifically Alexio uh, makes it really easy, easy to do this. Um, so now here's the part you guys probably all wanna know about is like how, how what are the actual numbers? Uh, what is the cost uh, of doing this? So I kind of have two clusters here. Um, the left-hand side is what we would uh, normally have where we're using one worker to uh, one EC2 instance. And I showed the types of instances that we might use for a standard cluster here uh, when we're testing. And then uh, I have on the right-hand side one that 
would contain the same amount of storage space, but uh, how many workers we can have in that's using the same amount of storage space. So on the left-hand side, there's uh, we'll allocate four cores, 32 gigs of RAM for a master um, using an R5A X large. That's about tw almost a quarter an hour. Um, and then we have nine worker nodes where we want to have uh, a little bit more memory so that we have uh, you know ha almost half a terabyte of storage. Uh, it's about 45 cents an hour. Um, it gives us a total of about uh, 450 um, 450 gigabytes uh, of memory storage in the cluster that we can run our tests on, and that'll cost us about four dollars an hour while the clusters are running. So if we wanted something similar <clears throat> uh, with uh, this simulated uh, cluster, we will need a couple more workers, uh, a little bit more than double the number of workers uh, to get the same amount of uh, storage in the cluster, but even doubling the workers from nine, or more than doubling from nine to 23, uh, the cost doesn't increase that much when you consider how much it would cost to run, you know, almost a thousand Alexio workers uh, on the simulated cluster. So uh, we some, we use the same exact master um, as the other cluster, but we're now using uh, the we're also using the same type of worker node, but uh, we're now running 40 workers. On each of those nodes. So typically for our for Alexio specifically, uh, if we're using 512 megabytes of RAM across 40 containers, that means we need to reserve about 20 uh, gigabytes for <clears throat> just the storage, and then we need to have uh, another 40 left over uh, or so for the actual Alexio process. Uh, so so the workers take up some RAM as well. Uh, I think it ranges anywhere between 500 megabytes and 1.5 gigabytes, depending on how heavy the workload is. Um, but typically this uh, setup works well. Uh, we've tested uh, with these instances before and they seem to work. And this lets us get a cluster of about 940 Alexio workers um, so that we can scale up you know, the, the worker metadata to make sure that the cluster still runs uh, well under this kind of load. And if you do the math here, uh, the cost for this cluster ends up being uh, $10.62 an hour uh, for 23 workers, which is more than double what the normal cluster is. But when you consider that we have almost a thousand Alexio workers, uh, I think the the cost is quite low. Um, it might be even less than a cost, less than a large pizza, uh, depending on where you buy your pizza from. And I think, yeah, uh, last slide here, uh, just some, Kind of, I kind of already talked about the, the port assignment, um, but that's one of the things that, that Alexio makes uh, quite easy um, for, for this kind of testing. Uh, the other thing is that we also have to modify some Alexio configuration when it comes when it when you scale um, you know up to thousands of workers. Uh, we've had larger clusters than than a thousand, um, but this was just kind of one example that I had um, that I wanted to show. But basically, uh, we also have to tune some like worker heartbeat values occasionally. Uh, we also, in, for these clusters, we'll tune down the block size so that each worker also gets a proportional amount of blocks compared to what the original test would have had. Um, I think there's also some network timeouts. But basically, this kind of testing also uh, lets us guide our users when it comes to scalability. So um, we even use some of these testing clusters to help write our scalability documentation um, to you know, help users when they are growing their clusters. Uh, and I think that's uh, about all I have. There are lots of customers that are running Alexio with over 500 nodes. Um, you can see lots of them here. Uh, but you know, I'm I would love to hear about more use cases if you guys have them. Um, and if you have any questions uh, about the presentation or how we test Alexio, uh, I'd love to answer them. Thank you, Zach. That was a great presentation. Very interesting to see how the Alexio engineering team goes about tackling some of these um, non-trivial challenges when it comes to large-scale distributed systems. So uh, we have a couple of great questions coming in already. And just a reminder, you're welcome to post your questions into the community Slack channel. Uh, otherwise, you can also ping them to me through the GoToWebinar control panel under the questions tab. Our first question here is, could Kubernetes play a larger role in your testing 
and why aren't you using Kubernetes now? Uh, yeah, so uh, Kubernetes is something we definitely thought about when we were uh, originally like planning on writing um, the the testing suite. Uh, so our testing framework for for launching clusters right now doesn't support using Kubernetes. It was actually written um, probably before Kubernetes was uh, really starting to get get big, and we haven't shifted to using it yet. Um, and I think it would also present some more challenges. Um, when it comes to the networking side for us, uh, and we haven't done enough investigation to see if it's worth running, uh, you know, test using Kubernetes to test this. Um, I think also uh, we we have lots of customers that are using Kubernetes and lots of customers that aren't, and so we need to we need to test on both. Um, we have tests to make sure our Kubernetes integration works, um, but I think when testing at scale. Um, we just haven't gotten around to doing that yet. Great question. Um, and I, we have another question here is uh, whether folks who are on Slack already, whether they can uh, ping me the question or they should post it into the general channel. Uh, either way, whatever you prefer, if you'd like to ping it to me directly, I will go ahead and post it into the general channel just so that others can see as well. Uh, our second question here is, on um, running lots of smaller processes with less data might not necessarily get all the issues that a real deployment would. So why would you this, use this approach uh, when it doesn't necessarily reflect sort of how Alexio is uh, normally used? Uh, yeah, so I think this is really one of the trade-offs that we have to make when it comes to uh, using the resources that we have and getting the most out of our, our test uh, our tests and test suite. Um, I think you know if we could run uh, a thousand node cluster using you know 15 gigabytes of RAM uh, or 16 gigabytes of RAM on each node, it would be great. But at the end of the day, um, you know the cost of running something like that every single day and making sure that your tests run and, and scale properly all the time, uh, it's expensive. And so I think uh, we had to make some trade-offs when deciding to test in this way, and we feel that uh, based on our analysis and the things we've already caught just by using this kind of testing framework is that the cost savings and benefit that we get from testing this way is that we've caught enough, enough issues to, to make it worth it, even though we might not catch everything. At, at the end of the day, uh, when you're testing software, uh, you could test forever and still not catch all of the bugs um, that might be present. So I think we're satisfied right now with the way that this works. Um, but if we had more resources, we'd love to do more testing at larger scales uh, with real kinds of deployments uh, rather than using these simulated ones. Great. Um, and our next question here is, can you talk more about the CI-CD testing that you've done? And do you use any simulator for simulating the cloud environment to save costs on storage or network? Um, so the, the CI-CD stuff, um, so right now we have uh, on our GitHub repo, uh, we have we use Jenkins to run a set of unit and integration tests on pretty much every PR, um, and then on a nightly basis we have a more comprehensive suite of tests that is the system tests I was talking about earlier, um, uh, kind of the ones on uh, this slide here, um, the metadata throughput and I/O throughput. Uh, these ones run uh, more on a night on a nightly basis. Um, so we, we try to catch issues you know that come up throughout a day, but not necessarily uh, per commit or per PR. Um, and I, what was the question? Uh, the other second uh, the half? first part was the CI/CD. The second part was about simulating a cloud environment to save costs on storage or network. So I guess I don't know what the benefits of simulating a cloud environment would be. Uh, we don't have any on-premise hardware to work with. So pretty much all of our work is done in the cloud. Um, uh, it's all either in AWS, Google Cloud, or Azure. Um, so we don't really, uh, we're not really able to simulate a cloud environment because the only thing we can really use is the cloud right now. Great. Um, our next question here is, do you test performance metrics when using simulated clusters? Uh, that's a good question. Um, so for the most part, we don't test uh, performance metrics. Uh, we make sure that the tests complete within a reasonable amount of time. Um, but 
<clears throat> uh, it's, it's kind of hard to compare the performance for these simulated clusters uh, because the, the configuration is different. Um, there's a lot of contention for CPU resources typically. Um, I, I, from our testing, I think I found that using this, uh, usually there's more CPU contention than there is contention for like RAM, uh, but that might depend on what you're testing uh, and the, the benchmark suite that you might be running. Um, so to answer that uh, simply is, no, we don't really test performance when using the simulated ones. It's more just to make sure that you can actually run uh, normal workloads at that scale, um, but we, we're not focused on performance for those. Our next question here is, how do you orchestrate different types of clusters in your simulated environments if you're not using Kubernetes? Um, so that is pretty much all managed by our in-house framework. Um, all of the cluster orchestration, installing, uh, you know, installing services, uh, on, you know, removing things, um, it's all done by this kind of in-house software that we have. Um, uh, yeah, that's kind of all I can say about it. So basically, you sort of built our own infrastructure yeah, yeah. for testing specifically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so kind of an in-house solution to what Kubernetes would have. Yeah. Um, it's just not focused around containers either. So it, it does a lot of the, the you know bare metal and installing packages. Um, okay, great. We have some more time for a few more questions if anyone has additional questions here. Uh, I also want to mention I posted into the GoToWebinar chat box two articles that Zach wrote. The first one is sort of a higher level blog that goes over some of the things that he covered in today's office hour. And then the second one is a deeper dive white paper that has more technical details if you're interested uh, to look into that further. All right, well, we have some more time here, so uh, Zach and I will hang on for a couple more minutes. Uh, but in the meantime, I want to take this time to thank Zach for a fantastic presentation and the great questions from the audience. And if you folks have any additional questions, even after the office hour, you're welcome to engage with Zach and other members of the uh, engineering team and the community team on the uh, Alexio community Slack channel.